Hey, hello people, my name is Rage, and welcome one and all to Rainbow Six Siege. Let us find out if it is indeed worth your time. The short answer is yes, but with a catch, the long answer, the rest of this video. So, honestly, for me, this game kind of came out of nowhere. It looked pretty cool when I saw demos of it being played, and when I played it a little bit at a gaming convention, but, you know, it was never sort of, you know, crazy, hype, amazing like a lot of games have been recently, like Fallout or Battlefront, but... The gameplay in this game really does speak for itself, and it's quickly, honestly, become one of the favourite games I've played in 2015. There is a lot of good stuff here, and it's a really, really excellent, exhilarating tactical shooter with a lot of cool stuff. There are a few problems, there are a few issues, but we'll get into that. So, initially then, we have the operator system, which is basically the classes you're going to be playing as in your 5 on 5 team based shooting. They all come with a set of weaponry and then a special ability. The special ability is what you're going to be wanting. Now, without going too in depth, it's just things like the sledge can use his hammer, break through walls, the thatcher can throw EMP grenades to disable electronic equipment, the uh, cap can can set traps at windows which explode people as uh, they go in, you've got the Twitch who has a special little robot that can crawl around and shock people, you've got the Doc with his med gun, and basically you just want to choose an ability that complements your team and that you like, and then you just rock it with that operator. All the weapons are fairly competitive, so it's very much who you kind of just like and thinks cool. So, for me, I already have three of the four Spetsnaz Russians, because I mean... There's just something about them. They're just basically everyone else in the All right, let me let me be real. Everyone else, okay. All the other operators look like special operatives. You know, they look like they're ready to do a special mission, like they're ready to do it. They're like they're geared up. They're looking pretty sneaky. They they've only got the minimal equipment. They they're going for this. Whereas the Russians the Russians are freaking mental! Look at them all! I swear to god, the Russians in this game are just psychotic. They all look like they've turned up to a war zone and then found out they're just defending a house. I mean, look at this dude! He belongs on a battlefield! And that's why I've kind of, sort of, you know, very much enjoyed the uh, Russians. So, you unlock the operators by uh, purchasing them with Renown, which you get for basically doing everything in the game. You can rack it up pretty quickly, and it's not that much of a chore at all to unlock. You can also use Renown to specifically edit a gun to give it different scopes, to give it different grips, and eventually to put various weapon skins, because of course you've got to get your weapon skins on. I mean, I'm using the one you got for being part of Alpha and Beta, because, you know, I've got more important things to spend my sweet, sweet renown on for now. So I'm going to unlock a class for you, just so you can see the process of it, because honestly, one of the coolest things in this game is when you unlock a class. So I'm going to unlock the cap cam. Here we go. And then, ba-boom. These soldiers think their training will keep them alive. They break down doors and come for windows, weapons drawn. But it's too late. They forgot the first rule of survival. A real hunter always watches where he steps. <laughs> <laughs> and every single Russian video is kind of that vibe. It's just really funny. Every single operator has that introductory video, and they're honestly badass. Okie dokie then. So first up, we have a Terrorist Hunt, which is basically the multiplayer game modes, but versus AI. You can also do it solo for mad bragging rights, especially if you beat it on realistic, which let me tell you, is very difficult. Like, realistic, the enemies are just beasts. Then we have Situations, which is the closest you're going to get to a single-player campaign in Siege. It teaches you all the basics and how to play while providing very cool missions for you to do, and honestly, there are a lot of fun to be had. I'm going to do it on normal because I'd like to not die repeatedly while showing you a few of the basics during this game. I am going to hop into a multiplayer match, but I do want to have a more controlled environment to introduce you to some of the mechanics that are happening without, you know, throwing for my team. 
So we do have these neat little cutscenes introducing each of the missions, which is kind of nice. You know, there wasn't really a need for this. You could have just had tip pop-ups or something, but it's it's kind of nice that they've got a little bit overboard and giving you cool little introductory cutscenes to things. And later on, you do get some properly awesome rendered cutscenes and it is fantastic because these missions do lead up to a big five-man mission which is supposed to fully introduce you to the multiplayer which is really really cool but yeah there's a lot of fun to be had doing these missions like you can just sit back relax and just kind of enjoy playing the game without the serious pressure of multiplayer and doing them as I said on harder difficulties is a real challenge and it's very rewarding in of itself. Now, annoyingly, the realism difficulty does make enemies into kind of bullet sponges, which does kind of suck, because, you know, it's kind of lazy difficulty, but it also does make their AI a lot better, which is good. So it, it's kind of a double-edged sword in that regard. So we'll enter the building here, and as you can see, you can repel up any wall, and anything that's destructible, well, you can destroy it. That's, you know, one of the main themes of the game. So this mission I'm on currently, there is a lot of these explosive charges everywhere, which is designed to catch me off guard, and, well, as you can see, explode the hell out of me. The class that I'm currently playing as on this mission, you get a set one each time, is IQ, and one IQ can do, she can raise uh, her detector here and uh, see all of the electronics as a nice little beep and then you can shoot them out. There's one, can I get that other one? It's a little bit around the corner, there we go. And obviously she's absolutely perfect for this mission and every time you are going to get someone who is tailored for the missions and that does make it really, really nice. So imagine this in multiplayer, I'm looking through the wall, seeing the traps of the defenders and just picking them off. Now you're never going to have to deal with this many traps, like that's absolutely absurd, but it's a nice little way of introducing you into the, you know, the mindset of checking for traps. So this is your breach charge. This is your classic, I'm going to explode a wall. And really, this is why this game is awesome in a nutshell. Just because of the various ways you can approach every single match. The loads of different angles of... Ah, ha, ha. All right, let's uh, sort him out. The loads of different, <laughs> the loads of different. <laughs> oh no! I sounded distinctly unfazed, <laughs> despite the sounds that I made. All right, boom, and down goes the wall. I mean, just that moment is absolutely incredible. So we do have leaning left and right, which is a very key aspect in this game. It very much is what you need to do. It's all about slow peeking round corners, making you sure you cover every single angle. Make sure you... How did I miss him? Make sure you see everything before it sees you, because you will die very, very quickly. Like, exceptionally quickly. I need to get my IQ back up here, because I am... Definitely struggling to not be completely exploded by explosives everywhere. So obviously I can see that they're there, but I can't see if they're actually in front of me or behind a wall. So let's breach charge through this room as well and basically continue on. I am doing this definitely a little bit more reckless than I would do if I was by myself, but I just want to, you know, get you a little bit introduced into the game and uh, how it works. So I think this is a nice way of doing that. But yeah, the actual gunplay and everything, it does feel super responsive. Everything kind of works how- ah! Everything kind of- <laughs> And then I blew up. And then I blew up. <laughs> All right, yeah, good. That'll do. That'll do. Obviously, the way you're supposed to do that is very slowly go round everywhere, check everything, check your corners, take it very relaxed, and slowly clear everything out. Not charge screaming, hip firing into an explosive bomb. But you know, whatever works. Spec Ops training comes in all shapes and sizes. So the actual meat of the game then, the main multiplayer mode, we have uh, casual and ranked. You need to get level 20 to do ranked, which is good. Make sure everyone knows what they're doing. So we'll just do a casual for now. The matchmaking's working great. If you know anything about the beta, it was very broken. But now it's kind of fine, which is... Uh obviously very nice to see and as I was saying the actual gunplay itself how everything feels movement it's all really nice now I do want to say in terms of the situations okay so we're gonna play hostage and we're on the bank I like the bank map there is a uh, 11 maps, I believe, and they're all varying in size, some massive, some tiny, and they all have wonderful, wonderful amounts of detail. So I'm going to play my favorite attacker here, and it is Glass. He comes with the AK-12, which is 
a really lovely, powerful assault gun. You can also use riot shields on him, but I prefer the rifle. And he comes with a grenade round that you can pop through walls, and it's very satisfying to use. But yeah, the maps are all very beautifully detailed, very intricate, and you can tell a lot of loving craft has gone into them, and they're absolutely a joy to play on. But yeah, the situations, I think are kind of a missed opportunity, because while what's there is good, and they serve as good introductions, I think there could definitely be a big argument for a single player, or at least co-op campaign type deal in this game, because it is surprisingly fun playing the game modes and mechanics against AI in a more story focused environment, so while it's great, oh god, run, 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 while it's great, I do think you could, ah, bollocks. He shot my drone. He shot my drone because I was off in Narnia land talking to you guys about situations. But yeah, I do think you could do a lot more on that and I hope they expand on the campaign situation aspect in future DLC. Talking of DLC, there is a... There is a uh, season pass. It doesn't come with anything essential or anything that makes people who buy it more powerful. Just a few skins, a bit of currency, and access to operators a week early before the release. Because there is eight more operators planned in the game. So we, unfortunately, did not find the hostage with our droning, which does kind of suck. So we're going to have to go do it the hard way and see where he is. But here we are, started on the mission. So as you can see, you do start with drones on the attacker. you got to whip round everywhere, see if you can locate where the defenders are holding up, see if you can locate your objective, and just generally find out what the hell's going on. So it, it's very key to have a good drone phase and actually understand uh, what you're up against here. So as we're going in blind, we're going to find this quite difficult. So yeah, as a uh, Glasden, I have this little device. If I attach this to a wall and then activate it, it will fire three grenades into the next room, and it's very, very powerful. I'm going to get on the cameras here and see if anyone's drone can actually find anything. They can't. But yeah, there's a lot of in-depth to every single mission. Just from going on the cameras like that and doing a little bit of on-mission scouting, you get four minutes around, which is about the sweet amount of time. It's low enough that you do have intense, go, 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 we're out of time, you just gotta Rambo it, and also allows for enough pre-planning and thought to go into everything you're doing. So it is kind of a nice little balance. The downtime between rounds in beta was astronomically terrible and way too long, but that's been tightened up a lot in release, and you're now spending a lot more time playing than staring at menus, whereas before it was definitely the other way around. We are very much struggling to find our target here, which does kind of suck. This is a very rare thing to happen, actually. This is kind of uh, worrying. I mean, it's kind of good because it gives me time to tell you guys things, but it also makes us look like the most inept spec ops team you've ever seen. Okay, there's firing going over there, which is probably a good sign that that's where the enemy is. So we got the skylight, we could have gone up on the building and uh, repelled down in, which is obviously really cool. So it looks like it might be in this uh, room, so what I'm going to do is attach a grenade round to this, and then pop, 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 and we'll send some cluster charges in there, see if they- OW! What even happened to me?! If you get damaged, but not too hard, so like by stuff that you can reasonably survive, you go down instead of fully dead, and then you can get revived on half health. But I'm genuinely unsure as to what actually hit me there, so that's kind of interesting. And honestly, this leads me nicely on to one of the biggest, most crippling issues with this game. I'm going to throw out my camera out and have a look if I can actually find where the enemy is. Hey, we just found the hostage. Never bloody mind. Where is it? All the way over... Actually, I say all the way over there. It's 14 meters away. So yeah, the biggest glaring issue with this game is for some reason, despite all of its merit, they felt the need to make the servers absolutely, diabolically terrible. <laughs> Are you serious? Come on, man! I just ran around, and then he double grenaded the freaking hostage. Oh, just wonderful. World above. Fantastic. Oh, my word. Oh, but yeah, the most crippling issue with this game as I roll up Tachanka over here and his freaking mounted turret. I mean, look, look at the difference in these five. One of them is clearly prepared more than the others. So yeah, I should start beating around the bush. The biggest crippling issue of this game is the servers. 
They are terrible. Granted, they're better than beta, but they are still awful. And what do I mean by that? They have very low tick rate, which means they sink very, very slowly. To put it in perspective, they sink about a quarter of the speed of CSGO servers, and what that translates to is hit registration is downright awful. And hell, even your positional place on the server compared to what your opponents and you're seeing is completely wrong. So a practical example then. Let's say I see an enemy and they have their back to me and I'm like, great. I'm going to sneak up on them, quietly kill them, not fire my gun. I'm going to knife them with the one hit melee and not alert anyone else to our presence. This is a hostage you've got to defend. I just put these up reinforcements so this can't be broken through. If I got spotted, that means there's a drone in the room. So at the start of the round, you want to hunt down and shoot all of the drones and make sure that's all okay, but as it is, I can't really see any. But yeah, say you're sneaking up on this enemy, they have they have got their back to you, they are completely unaware of what is about to go down. Okay, let's assume that. Moves, move, sackle, zap. I would love to set up my turret. Basically, when he lowers the turret, that means it's enough space to set it up, but my teammate here is trying his absolute hardest to prevent me from setting up one of the most powerful defensive tools in the game. See, this is the one thing that annoys me about this class, is he spends a lot of time trying to very finically set up his turret, because it needs a very ultimately weird amount of space, and it's very irritating to do. Yeah, I'm just going to have to give up even setting it up here, which is obviously a very irritating thing, but I guess I don't really have a choice at this point. So what I'm going to do is take it over here and simply put it in this corner, and then we're going to hop on it. It's very bad that all five of us are in the same room here. You want to kind of spread out throughout the building a little bit more, and then you end up with more coverage, but we just had a breach over there, so we've got to be ready for it. So yeah, as defenders, you get a little bit of time, you've got to set up your defenses, choose your positions, and just kind of wait it out for the enemy to come in. So yeah, back to my example. You're sneaking up on this guy, his back is completely to you, he's got no idea you're there, you're getting there, and then suddenly you fall over dead. And the dude you were sneaking up on gets the kill credit. And you're like, hang on, how? How did that happen? How is he, how is he getting the kill? What? He wasn't even looking at me. And then you get the kill cam, which th at the best of times is incredibly inaccurate. But on his kill cam, he was just looking at you sneaking up on him. He completely was aware you were there. He was just watching it happen and then shot you, which basically is like, no, that's not what happened. He wasn't even facing me. How did he... How did he do that? I don't understand. So this is the issue. The servers don't sync up too well between players. So what you think is going on isn't what actually is going on. And you end up with seemingly bullshit aggravating moments where you're convinced something went down differently to how it actually did according to the game. That was freaking terrifying, by the way. That was absolutely just scary as hell in a lot of different ways here. I abandoned my turret after the first kill, because there's no point as to Chanka just sitting on it, because if your enemy is uh, know where it is, then they are just uh, going to kill you. I'm pretty sure... No, I thought I saw a... Oh, I hear Thermite. I hear Thermite. Thermite's basically a, a class that lets you break down reinforced walls. I can't really... Yeah, there we go. I got shot. I can't really help my teammate there, because obviously there was two people breaching in two separate places, but I didn't really have a choice. See, let's look from his perspective. It's probably very different to what actually happens. See, I didn't even see the shield guy on my screen, so that was definitely interesting. But yeah, the servers are shockingly awful, and it makes for a terrible time. I'll go Glass this time, because actually Fuse isn't too great on hostage, because you're going to accidentally blow up the hostage, as I've apparently realized is possible thanks to the first round. So, yeah, you're going to have very frustrating times. I mean, the most egregious example of this is a video of someone catching a attacker repelling in front of a window, unloading eight shotgun shells point blank into them, blood going everywhere. They don't die, they don't get affected, then they kill the shotgunner, and the shotgunner's like, Seriously? What? That's not what happened! And it's just infuriating. If this game had higher tick servers, better servers, it would be 
Honestly, a masterpiece. Damn, he saw me. It would honestly be a masterpiece of a competitive shooter because everything that is here is great. The mechanics are great. The breaching is great. The tactical aspect is deep and compelling. The choices between the classes, they're all interesting and badass. The maps are wonderful. The gunplay is very tight, controlled, and it feels like you're firing a gun. You feel like a spec ops unit. You feel like you're in this intense siege situation that they wanted to create. Everything is here. Everything that I can talk about is wonderful. The classes are balanced. Everything feels like it should. People die quickly, but not too quickly to your bullets. And you're rewarded for having good aim and high skill. And it's just... It's, it's upsetting, okay? I cannot stop praising the actual gameplay, you know, the game of the game enough. And it's just incredibly let down by inaccurate servers that mean you're not even seeing what's actually happening. And in a multiplayer environment, that's... I mean, it's 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 not playable. It's tra tragic. It really is. So let me give another example. Say you are on the floor. You are holding a corner. So you're just aiming. Let's say I was just aiming at this window like this. And then imagine if in a second from now, so three, two, one. Oh, I died. Kill cam. I'm, it's over. I saw nothing happen, but I'm dead. That's it. I didn't get to see anything. I instantly fell over. Then it goes to the kill cam. And on the kill cam, the enemy did this. I'm watching, the enemy's doing this, he peeks round, he sees the side of me, he goes there, and he shoots me in the head, and, you know, from his perspective, fairly clean kill, I didn't react, but from my perspective, I saw nothing. Now, this is known as peeker's advantage, and it happens in a lot of shooters, because simply how servers work, they do give the peeker an advantage, but the higher the tick rate, the less the peeker has an advantage, and obviously you want it to be as even as possible, but in this game, because it's so low, you will die to someone who has peeked you before you've even seen that they're there so it feels like you just got completely screwed out of your life and you've now got to sit out on this game for no reason you want to destroy every camera that you see to limit the intelligence of the defenders so it just it really does suck that that can happen and it feels very unrewarding and very frustrating but as a pure fun aspect there are enough awesome rounds and just sheer yes moments that it's still a really worthwhile game and really fun playing. It's just let down by moments like that. It really, really is. And honestly, the satisfaction of shooting someone in this game is so high. It's like such a <laughs> moment when you actually kill someone. It's incredibly invigorating. It really is. And clutching around, you know, like one versus three and then winning, you feel just like a champion. And that feeling has only ever been recreated for me in CSGO. And that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So I'm going to move around here trying to find where our hostage is. It's sort of underneath me. So if I can drop down, that would be great. It's three versus two, actually. So we might actually win this. There doesn't seem to be a way down. And the thing is, I don't have any breach charges on this guy. I've got smoke grenades instead. So I'm going to have to go in on the same level as him. Took a little bit of fall damage there, but that's absolutely fine. We'll see if I can't see anyone through this. So Glaz's deal is... Oh, cool. Go team. Go team. Glaz's deal is he has this scope, which basically gives him magnification. It's also a very powerful gun. He's basically a sniper. And also, the scope basically lights up shadows, so people can't just hide in random areas. So you have to win three rounds to win a match of this game. That will go... We'll go Capcan this time. You have to win three rounds to win a match of this game. And it can be, obviously, 3-0, 3-1, 3-2. And if you both get 2-2, then you go for a few draw rounds. And it's it's a nice amount. It doesn't feel like too much. doesn't feel like too little. gives you time to respond to your opponents, change your classes, change up your tactics. And that's all good. One other slight issue that I do have, and I don't know if this is there in Ranked, I've heard reports from people that saying that it is and it isn't, is when you're spotted by a player, you get a little message on your screen saying you have been spotted, you know, and I, I don't like it. This is this one is per personal preference. It's not just objectively terrible like the servers being a pile of crap. This is personal preference, but for me, I don't like having psychic information being projected to uh, you as a player. I feel like it's your job to know if you're near a camera, your job to know if a drone is looking at you, not some random message on your screen to tell you from the voice of Rainbow God that you have been spotted, so you should start looking for the drone, because it feels kind kind of terrible. If you're the drone player, you've got your drone. Let's say he drove in here, he's on this shelf. None of us have noticed, and he's spotting the crap out of us. If I heard that, I'd suddenly be like, alright, where is he? He's probably on one of the
of these bits of furniture, where are you, and then shot him. But I wouldn't know that if this psychic you've been spotted message doesn't appear on your screen. And I really feel like it's a little bit too, I guess I'm going to say, casualization of the game. Alright, so, as Capcan then, I have these uh, little traps which I can drill into the wall, which will do a little laser across if someone walks through that. Then they're going to explode in a wonderful, wonderful shower of glory. So you don't want to put these in too obvious places. You want to obviously kind of make them a little bit more random, but they are very good at just generally denying entry to certain locations. Maybe I should put one on here. You know what, I'll go for it. Mainly because I'm a little bit too late to any better places. And it actually does look like we are going to get some action here. So I'm just going to chill in this spot for now. Being a defender is very much waiting, being alert, listening and ready. Which is kind of awkward for me. Because it's difficult to be alert, listening and ready while I am... While I am talking and explaining what's going on with this game. Okay, I kind of... Uh, I got some blood there, so I definitely did something. I'm going to put my charge there, which, okay, my uh, teammate just shot my own gadget, so that's fantastic, I guess. I guess he doesn't want me to have a trap for the opponents. I guess he can just die then, you know? Whatever, whatever floats his boat, really. I'm kind of waiting for someone to drop down here. We are now two versus five, which is just wonderful. All right, we killed him as he came down. That's good. Okay, but they know I'm in here now, and I have no real way of escaping apart from through that window. As a defender, you can go outside, but after after five seconds of being outside, your position is completely revealed to the enemy team. So they basically have wall hacks to see you, which makes it not that efficient, but you also definitely can use it tactically. So I'm kind of in a really screwed situation here, but fortunately... My teammate is doing a really, really lovely job. Oh, they found the hostage. There's not much I can do about it, though. Like, I want to go round, and obviously I've gone outside, which has uh, helped a little bit, because now I can actually get round to a different area and help from a different angle. But we can't get in through there. I'm going to have to try and get in through the main room. This is kind of irritating, but not much I can do to... Uh, Stop it. Okay, that's fine. That's absolutely A-OK. -okay. If I can get my teammate up. Oh, he did down someone, so they did bled out, so that's fine. So yeah, going outside like that can be a tactical advantage if you use it in the way that I just did. And really, it was my only way out of that situation, because my teammates had reinforced the wall behind me. So I'm trying to track down their last player here, which is... Uh, Proving a little bit on the difficult side of things. Where are you? But yeah, there's no denying the intensity of the situations this game creates. It's a very, very rare game that gives you this kind of heart pounding, palpitating, ooh, 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 as the rounds go on and you're getting so into it. I don't know why he was just crab walking backwards and I don't really know where he felt like he was aiming and, you know, obviously immediately gets called a noob by his team. <laughs> We'll go gla uh, Glass Fuse even again for this one. We're now three versus five on match point. Hoorah! Let's do this! Spec Ops! Here we go! Uh, but yeah, your average game of Siege is going to last anywhere from 15 minutes to half an hour, I would say, which is kind of a nice little high-action bite for you. But you can definitely play this game for hours in a row and get a very satisfying feeling out of it. So let's see this time we can have an actual competent drone round and actually find our objective. That would be kind of nice here. Alright, is there even a way in the building here? There's normally, yep, there we go. There's normally little vent systems like this which give us access to the place. We got another drone in here. I'll let him explore downstairs and I will go upstairs. Normally I'm quite good at getting the drone in a very advantageous position and let's say they were in this room. I mean it's great to let's jump on the shelf and just kind of sit here until hey team killing that's what I like to see. Spec Ops training boys. Spec Ops training. Alright if this is fortified. Oh no that's an external door. 
Never mind. Because obviously, being that I played the uh, beta, I've only know the maps that were in beta. So all of the new maps to me, like, for example, the one I'm on right now, I have no idea of the layout. So finding the objective becomes a lot more difficult because I don't know where the objective can spawn, if that makes sense. I think this is... Yeah, this is definitely a room it can spawn on, but it's not here today, which kind of sucks. I mean, I'm just going to keep chilling on my drone until my teammate do something that would uh, need me to go back to being my operator. It's a little bit dangerous to just stand there in the middle of nowhere not doing anything, but unless one of the defenders gets very, very ballsy and... Uh, Ooh, free versus free. Okay, if they're shooting people, then that means they're probably near the objective. So I'm going to go help out then. Because you've got to be a good team player, you know? That's how you do it. That is how you do it. So they've busted in just through the normal access door. Sledge has made that hole in the wall with his sledgehammer, which is always really good. Anything going on there? There's a trap in there. Ah, they've reinforced this wall. So that very much gives us a idea as to where they are. I don't want to end up accidentally blowing up the hostage so we'll go with this one and then I'm going to also do this just in case there's a lurker I mean you just want to create a lot of havoc with these cluster charges just generally cause explosions everywhere because people tend to panic a lot when random explosions are happening I'm gonna throw a flashbang through this hole and when it explodes I'm gonna hop in flashbangs are pretty potent in this game if you get hit by one, you are fully blind for a long time. And turning away from them isn't nearly as effective as it is in, for example, CSGO. So this is where I was having to hide last time. Not much here. I'm going to throw another flashbang in there. As we can see, there is someone in there. So I'm going to hop in and kill them. Oh, hoo -hoo, that was close. That was clay. Hey, I got them. Fantastic. That's absolutely fine. So that means... We won the first round of overtime, somehow. <laughs> okay, cool. He got the second guy. So they were both over in that corner. I'm not sure if they actually did get flashed, but there, comeback victory. We were losing hard, but then we fought it back, and it feels good. Yes, it does. So there we go. I had a very nice team, actually. They played very well. BJ on their team <laughs> was also very good. So yeah, I've leveled up to nearly five, and I've only done a few matches on live release servers. So you do level up fairly quickly, but it's still nice to have a requirement to get into rank. Make sure people know what they're doing. So there you go, guys. That's Siege in a nutshell. I hope you've got quite the impression of the game. Everything, honestly, fantastic, apart from the servers. My name's been Rage, and I like you've enjoyed this. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Oh, good boy. Yeah.